Eugene Hoffman, I'm the CEO of Vendicia. And Vendicia is a subscription platform for scale consumer offerings like over the top television subscription offerings. Well, I think uh, there's two messages about OTT right now. Um, one is that it is time. Uh, the consumer adoption on the other side, the industry trends, it is absolutely time to start getting serious about offering real internet-based OTT offerings at premium prices um, to start understanding how that market works. Because otherwise, there's a real risk that the market moves on and you end up being one of the left-behind providers or the left-behind content providers. I think so far a lot of television content providers and platforms have looked at this as, well, we'll give you additional access to our content on a second screen, but it's not the primary way we're going to do business with you. Where that's changing is folks like Hulu, Netflix, uh, the sports leagues in the United States who are making it available for you to just subscribe directly regardless of kind of what your home television connection actually looks like. And those businesses are absolutely growing very strongly. Um, it runs the risk if you're kind of a classic provider, a classic telecom, a classic satellite provider, of being left behind um, you know, when sports and entertainment move to these direct and IP-mediated internet businesses. I don't, think that, I don't think the two have to be distinct. I don't think a traditional broadcaster has to say that the only way that I'll still continue to be primarily going to market is via, you know, either directly when you're somebody like a DirecTV or a B Sky B, or um, indirectly if you're CBS or BBC. You know, you actually can do both, and that's in fact what I think we're starting to see. You know, HBO's announcement in the United States just this past year um, starts to underline that there are going to be multiple ways, and some of this is that, you know, there are different customer segments here. Um, older folks may very well wish to stay bundled. You know, they've gotten their internet access and their television from the same satellite or cable connection, but the younger crowd have adopted, you know, iPhone, iPad, um, Android. TV is almost a secondary screen for them. Their primary screen is actually the portable. Um, it's a very different perspective, to the point where even my own children don't really understand what linear television actually is. Well, we have the skills and the know-how and the infrastructure to allow you to launch a scaled consumer subscription service. So everything from signing the customer up, dealing with global payment infrastructure, um, being able to maintain the customer lifetime extremely long times, and then manage all of the how do you promote this now? You know, how do you actually go out and put this in a store to convince people to buy it when they're buying a television set or a, not a tablet? Um, it's all of the marketing and infrastructure pieces necessary to really be able to launch a global scaled internet OTT offer. Well, I think it's interesting to look at the various different places that the European markets are. Obviously, they're a bit more fragmented, and some are both ahead and behind. Um, you know, in some ways, the UK market is a parody uh, with the way the United States market is working, but in other ways, because of the BBC's influence and other things, they're not. Um, so it's really interesting to see you know, what pieces of the OTT uh, pie, if you will, have been adopted in different regions versus not. Um, one of the surprising things we've seen is you know, Germany's uh, broadband in, uh, penetration is actually quite low. And that's driven the fact that OTT has not been as compelling because people don't have you know, 10, 50, 100 megabit uh, connections to be able to stream HD content.